Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, buddy? My name is Zell Prince. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, today I got another SCP video for you guys. We've got SCP-4049 Pit Beasts. Now, this has actually been on my uh, videos to react playlist for a while now, and I've just been putting it off because I wanted to get a few other videos out before this. So, finally, today we're going to be reacting to this, and with all my SCP reaction videos, this is not an SCP I have reacted to nor have I ever seen before up until the making of this video. So, without further delay, we are just going to get right into today's video. We are going to be starting, starting in 3, 2, 1, go. The SCP Foundation contains a lot of monsters. From SCP-682, the lizard that refuses to die, refuses to, die. to SCP-939, a species of pack hunters that steal the voices of their victims. Been a while since we've heard of them. These predators that occupy the hundreds of containment cells of the Foundation make it their job to hunt and kill innocent people, or worse. But have you ever wondered where some of those monsters come from? The first encounter yeah. that the SCP Foundation had with SCP-4049 was on July 14th of 2010. The Foundation 40, operates a massive surveillance network around the entire world through the use of AI, delegated duties, and compartmentalized information. They're able to have 911 operators report any calls that seem anomalous in nature while knowing nothing about the Foundation itself. This way, they're able to constantly be aware of anything anomalous going on in the country that gets reported to 911. On July 14th, the Foundation was alerted of a call that likely had an anomalous component. At first, it didn't seem like much. It was a remote address in Wyoming, outside of a small town called Gardnerville, <laughs> the vacation home of one Richard Sampson, a wealthy businessman in the area, placed right on the slopes. The call was made late in the afternoon by someone purporting to be the groundskeeper of the home while Mr. Sampson was away. He was screaming into the phone, terrified and largely incoherent, but the operator <laughs> made out something about a monster attacking the house. There was a lot of noise in the background, sounds of shouting, destruction, and what sounded like animalistic roars and grunts. Mm. The 911 operator moved the call up, and it didn't take long for the Foundation to determine that something strange was going on here. They dispatched a handful of agents, deep undercover as officers with the Wyoming Highway Patrol, to the I was going to say, they look like uh, park rangers for some reason. I don't know a lot about all of the uh, law enforcement in the country, but I'm learning as we go, as anyone would. After about half an hour, the agents called back into HQ. The scene they had found was nothing short of gruesome. Upon arrival, they were greeted with what appeared to be the aftermath of a particularly violent and brief tornado. Wow. The entire front section of the ground floor had been shredded, the gardens trampled, and the interior utterly destroyed. The agents picked their way between the wreckage of the home. It functionally didn't exist anymore. The walls were collapsed from being rammed and torn through, and the roof had collapsed in on itself. Seems like SCP-4049. It's not like house interior. <laughs> the broken shards and pieces of furniture and wreckage were everywhere. Despite appearances, this wasn't a tornado. A tornado would have thrown the entire house around. No, this was, as the groundskeeper had said, something alive, monstrous, and very angry. Where is the groundskeeper? Of the groundskeeper, 
The Foundation agents began to look for him once they took stock of the damage of the home. At first, they couldn't find him among the massive pieces of debris and assume the worst. Even if whatever had destroyed the house decided to not kill him, he could easily have been killed by the collapsing house, buried under rubble, or a dozen other things. They picked through the ruins, calling out that they were from the police and were here to help. Eventually, after another half hour of searching, they heard something. What sounded like crying and whispering became audible as the wind died down. The agents honed in on the noise and found it was coming from one of the larger piles of rubble. After getting some equipment, they were able to heft up the piece of the collapsed roof and found the groundskeeper underneath, curled into a ball and talking to himself. He seemed to be in some kind of panicked fugue state, not responding to the agents trying to get through to him. They wrapped him in a shock blanket and put him in the back of one of their patrol cars. But even after that, they couldn't get anything of use out of him. He was just shaking and muttering something about monsters. It's like his entire mind was completely shattered due to the experience he went through. Eventually, he was given amnestics to forget about the incident entirely and recovered. After the agents reported back to HQ, a new issue popped up. They weren't the only ones who knew about this. A news website a few counties away had the story. The Foundation quickly put out a cover story. The house had probably been destroyed by a group of grizzly bears, possibly rabid. They had the local government issue a warning advising local residents to stay inside and out of the wilderness until the animals could be tracked and euthanized. And that's exactly what the Foundation did. Mobile Task Force Epsilon 6, the Village Idiots. Ah, right, Epsilon. NTF that specializes in taking on... <laughs> village Idiots. I was not expecting that out of Epsilon 6. <laughs> I've heard of Epsilon 6 on so many occasions, but I've never heard them referred to as the Village Idiots. <laughs> Just seems completely out of character. Ominous threats in remote rural areas and small towns were dispatched to track and contain or terminate whatever had destroyed that mansion. The creature had left a strong trail of tracks, scent, and general destruction, and the troopers followed it north for hours into another dense... Look how they have uh, M1 Grands, instead of, like, modern weaponry. Forest, ...where they discovered the gigantic, hulking Ooh, creature what the hell? while was asleep and shot it. It was huge, with rippling muscles on all four legs and no fur... It's like a skinless lion without a hu with a human head. ...to speak of. But the most striking feature was a frighteningly human face. The agents resolved to let the researchers handle the autopsy and busied themselves with the other things in that forest. There was an old abandoned arms factory that the creature seemed to have come from. The agents descended into the decrepit abandoned building, following the creature's trail right into the basement. They well, well, didn't they say that this whole incident took place back in 2010 for this document? For this SCP. So why are they carrying M1 Grands? There they found a large steel door, and behind it, the anomaly that would eventually be called SCP-4049. It was strange. It seemed to be some kind of oh. massive empty room looking up into the sky, even though they were deep underground. Not entirely empty. The dirt ground had a series of concentric rings of gravestones in it, all facing inward. The agents were treated once they realized they had walked into a spatial anomaly and called for backup. The Foundation quickly flew in- I was trying to think of the word in my head. I wasn't thinking spatial anal anomaly. I was thinking like, like an alternate reality that goes through this, that this door leads to. That's what I was thinking. But spatial reality makes much more, uh, much more, much more sense. And researchers and a containment <clears throat> team to figure out what the anomaly was and to ensure no one else got into the factory while they figured- Before they uh, start explaining, I'm going to give my own quick thought about the graves themselves. I think the graves are the resting place for the creatures. The ones with the human faces that walk to wander out, feast, do cause destruction, and then come back. Because that's what it seemed like it was doing from what the, the, what the video was telling me. It went to the cause destruction, and then it was making its way back, but got killed along the way. I believe every time something significant happens, like a death or something, that spatial reality for SCP-4049 reacts in such a way that it creates a creature based off on the individual's soul. I know that was a little 
off putting to put in there for those who know this SCP very well, but that's my interpretation before they go into any kind of explanation. With that being said, let's get back to it. That out. The basement of the factory became a sort of base of operations for the large crew of research and security <sighs> personnel assigned to SCP. Very hot in my room. I had to I turn off the air conditioner and everything else to record videos because this is recorded on the same day I recorded that stalker video two days ago when it comes out. So that's why I'm wearing the same same, same uh, clothing. I have the door open over there so that the air conditioner that's on in the living room can come in here. Just wanted to say that real quickly. After making sure there were no other of the monsters designated SCP-4049-1 instances in the nearby forest, the researchers began to experiment on it. They determined that the room on the other side of the hallway was in an extra-dimensional space. Members of D-Class personnel were sent in with GPS trackers, and even though they could still be heard fine on the radio, the GPS trackers failed totally. Obviously, the fact that you could see the sky from an underground room was anomalous. Yeah. The attempts to dig into where the room should have been from the surface also led to nothing but more dirt. From inside, the D-Class were able to give a detailed report on the room as they walked around. It was perfectly circular and pretty large, about 30 feet across, give or take. A tall white wall ringed the room's border and was perfectly smooth mm. and impossible to get a grip on enough to climb. Cold, hard marble. The floor of the room wasn't marble, though. It seemed it's just to be dirt. dirt. The D classes were ordered by researchers to get samples of what they could, and they scooped a little dirt into sample bags. But as soon as the subject stepped back over the threshold into the corridor of SCP 4049, the sample bags they collected spontaneously combusted. Oh. Up in flames. Any chemical analysis of its composition was, of course, impossible. Un impossible. Researchers resolved to get what information they could of just looking at SCP-4049 first, and there was still a lot to look at. The D-Class inspected the rings of gravestones inside SCP-4049. How many gravestones are there? Two at the moment. A larger ring contained a smaller ring. Inside the smaller ring, there was a circular empty space a few feet wide. Most of the graves were unfilled and unmarked, just a patch of dirt turned over. But about mm. a dozen of them had a gravestone at their head, made of that same white marble substance the walls were made from. They weren't fancy, just a simple white rectangle, standing yeah. with some strange symbols. The D-Class took photos and sent them to the researchers, who recognized the markings as an ancient word in Greek. In Greek? Hound. The researchers were admitted to... So I'm semi on the right path for what I said earlier. ...baffled by what this could mean for SCP-4049, but decided to figure out the connection using the evidence they had, the corpse of the SCP-4049-1 instance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The researchers placed the huge corpse inside the factory, creating a secure space to perform the autopsy. Then a team of doctors began cutting into it with scalpels, or they tried anyway. They quickly realized that the skin of the creature was far too thick to be breached with scalpels and resorted to long, sharpened knives. They discovered quite a few things about the instance's anatomy, along with why and how it was able to do and absorb so much damage. It was a quadruped, walking on four limbs. The yeah. forward one seemed to be in the shape of arms with elbows and wrists, but also had clawed paws like a dog's. The back legs were thick and heavily muscled, and digitigrade, again, just like a dog, so they could be used to leap and jump great distances. Once they cut away the skin, the researchers noticed that it was indeed much thicker than they expected it to be. Human skin is only about two millimeters thick, yeah. but this was a full centimeter throughout, wow. as well as incredibly tough and gamey. Internally, the structure was all wrong. It seemed almost human-like but with a few key differences to suit the vastly changed exterior body. The spine was much thicker and wider, as well as being curved to fit the four-legged structure. There seemed to be redundant organs. The researchers theorized they were backups, like the secondary heart they found inside the creature's innards. It could serve as a backup if the main heart stopped working or was damaged, or it could work together with the main heart to improve the instance's performance during physical activity. Huh. There didn't seem to be any- Well, it is a big creature, so if it has one heart and it's small, it probably would not be sufficient enough to provide uh, oxygen and blood to the rest of the body. But that would probably be a reason why they would need two hearts. ...kind of reproductive system. 
It wasn't surgically removed, it just wasn't there at all. Like it had magically disappeared. Mm. Inside the thing's head, the skull was different. The mouth was much wider and larger, and it didn't take long for the researchers to figure out why. Mm -hmm. When rooting around in its mouth, they quickly discovered it had an extra set of sharp teeth behind its main Another throat. row. All unnerving, slightly disturbing discoveries, but the most frightening wasn't something they found inside the instance. It was something they noticed immediately upon containing it. Its face was human. It had been morphed, of course, to fit the altered skull, but there were two eyes, a forehead, a nose, lips. It was inarguably a human face. Yeah. The researchers sent for a DNA. But why did it have? But well, why does it have a human face? Disturbed, but not surprised to discover what they had already been expecting. The instance was entirely genetically human, not a changed species or a close relative. This creature had once been a regular human being, like you or I. The researchers had just sent the DNA sample off. So I was, for the most part, correct. It is. It was human, but without the death part them just being morphed into these uh, hound-like creatures. So I was on the right path earlier when I made my theories. It was just, I was just off with the uh, soul part. I was off. I was off. I was close, but I was off. Off to check if there was a match in the criminal database when suddenly the lights went red. Containment breach. Shield, and the site's alarms began to sound. At that moment, the steel door leading to SCP-4049 flung open and another SCP-4049-1 instance bounded out into the corridor on all fours. It set its beady eyes on three members of the mobile task force, standing on the far side of the long corridor. For a moment, it didn't do anything, and it let out a long screech that echoed around the entire factory. Its rear legs tensed up, and it began to bound down the hallway toward them. All of the security guards opened fire with their machine guns on the anomaly, trying to bring it down. It shrugged off the bullets like they were raindrops, and didn't so much as slow down. Wait, so how did they kill the first one, then? Meanwhile, the two dozen other security personnel in the facility were rapidly grabbing their weapons and armor from their lockers before rocketing down the stairs to the corridor. By the time- Are they using anomalous ammunition that's specifically meant to kill uh, anomalies? So if that's the case of how they killed the first one, then that would make sense. Because he just said that their bullets were bouncing off of it, even though the first one I was shown at the beginning is dead. Made it down. It was too late. The instance was using its claws and jaws to tear two of the three poor members of the task force to shreds. Yeesh, no survivors. Them, but it was attacking them with enough anger and malice that there wasn't going to be much left when it was done. The third member of the task force had fallen and was backing away from the anomaly in fear. The remaining members of the task force opened fire, smothering the SCP-4049-1 instance in a hail of bullets. The sudden overwhelming firepower caught it off guard, and after a few seconds of sustained gunfire, it fell to the ground, dead. It's regular bullets. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <coughs> but does that, does that, does it keep its guard up or something that keeps the bullets from killing it when it's not ambushed? Let's just keep playing. Once the Foundation realized the active danger that SCP-4049 presented, they decided not to take any chances with containment. The 50-meter-long corridor leading to SCP-4049 from the basement elevator was fortified. An airlock was installed on the far side separating it from the rest of the factory. Then, motion detectors were set every few meters throughout the hallway, attached to a series of deterrents. If an SCP-4049-1 instance smashed out of the steel door, it would trip the alarms and activate everything from a supersonic sound cannon to sentry guns and a machine gun emplacement. And if none of those worked, the entire corridor could be pumped full of nerve gas, guaranteeing the death of the instance without risking the lives of any personnel. This kill corridor was to be guarded by the Applied Task Force IOTA-9 to ensure that no SCP-4049-1 instance would survive its escape. But after the corridor was retrofitted, the Foundation had a bigger problem. Where were these SCP-4049-1 instances coming from to begin with? I'm still thinking they're coming, clawing their way out of the graves. They performed another DNA test on the new instance. Its face was different, 
so it seemed logical that it was a different person. When the results came back, the researchers were surprised to find that not just one, but both of the samples had DNA matches in the national database. Both were men from the tri-state area who had mysteriously died or disappeared in the past few months, while at some kind of religious service. They were both avid big game hunters, with an interest in shooting moose, bears, and elk. So, hunters. They had both been the subject of a fire-related incident. One had been presumed dead when his house burned down. The other had simply vanished, with his car being found hours later on fire by the side of the highway. In both cases, a body was never recovered, but the authorities did find a strange stone-tipped arrow driven into the ground nearby. Over the following months, the Foundation observed a number of these strange events happening in Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, and like clockwork, Every time it happened, a new headstone appeared over one of the previously unmarked graves inside SCP-3049, saying the same Greek word, Hound. On top of all of that, almost every time a man in the area disappeared under these specific circumstances and a grave was created, an SCP-4049-1 instance would appear inside SCP-4049 sometime in the following two months buried within the soil circle in the center of the room. It would claw its way out of the dirt, smash hey, the right. steel door to SCP-4049, and race down the hallway trying to kill and destroy whatever was in front of it until it was gunned down. But in one instance, that didn't happen. On September 17th of 2015, the Foundation had gotten into the rhythm of containing SCP-4049, so they weren't startled or caught off guard when an agent with the highway patrol reported finding a flaming truck near a hunting ground. In the bed was an elk carcass, with a stone-tipped arrow lodged deep into the meat. Applied mm. Task Force IOTA-9 at the factory began to prepare for an imminent appearance from an SCP-4049-1 entity within the following weeks, and established a round-the-clock guard in the kill corridor. But it never came. By December, nothing had happened at all. The Foundation made the decision a D-Class would be sent into SCP-4049 with a camera and radio, in the hopes of manually initiating the event to occur. The D-Class subject wasn't given very specific instructions, just fitted with a body camera, a two-way radio, and told to listen to all instructions on the headset. The researchers ordered him forward, until he reached the other side of the hallway, where he was to open the steel door leading to SCP-4049 and enter. When he entered, everything looked the same as the Foundation expected it to. The same gravestones, walls, and dirt. He moved towards the center of the room to the dirt circle, but suddenly stopped, looking around. When the researchers asked why, he reported hearing the sound of dogs barking for a moment, before the researchers told him to keep walking. When he stopped in the center of the room, he again radioed in, feeling that someone was there. The camera didn't pick anyone up, but he insisted that there was an odd feeling, just hmm. before the audio stream suddenly cut out. A burst of static interference drowned everything else out, and was slowly winded down. The D-Class couldn't be heard anymore, but a strange female voice was on the line speaking to the Foundation. She mentioned that the Foundation had been ruining her pets for far too long. The Foundation demanded the speaker identify themselves, but she just scoffed, indignant at what she called human arrogance. Right after that, all audio feeds were cut out permanently. This mysterious woman was designated as SCP-4049-2. Seven seconds New entity. The largest SCP-4049-1 instance ever recorded exited SCP-4049, oh, standing at almost 11 meters high. All of the deterrents were activated, but even then, it still took all of them combined with machine gun fire from the applied task force to bring the creature down. No remains of the D-Class and no traces of whoever was speaking on the radio were ever found by the researchers. It can be dangerous to stand between someone and their beloved pets. Now go watch SCP-1437 okay. A Hole to Another Place and- Okay, that really intrigued me. I'm glad I actually held off on this, uh, SCP video for quite some time, because that really did intrigue me a bit more than I was expecting. <laughs> when I put these videos on the list, I'm expecting them to be pretty standard SCP thing, go along, something bad happens, they try and contain it, something breaks out and there's something mysterious, which is usually the case. But this was different on the path of what I was expecting. 
overall a good SCP to look into in the future. And if there's any other videos like it, I'll actually probably check them out in my own time. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.